So next I want to get into uh, diversity, which I know came up earlier. Um, so uh, only 12% of machine learning researchers are women. Uh, so this is kind of a very, uh, very dire statistic. Um, there's also a kind of extreme lack of racial diversity and age diversity um, and other factors. Um, and this is, this is significant. Um, a kind of positive example of what diversity can help with uh, in a post, uh, Tracy Chow, who was an early, early engineer at Quora and, and later at Pinterest, um, wrote that the first feature, and so I think she was like one of the first five employees at Quora, uh, the first feature I built when I worked at Quora was the block button. I was eager to work on the feature because I personally felt antagonized and abused on the site. And she goes on to say that if she hadn't been there, you know, they might not have added the, the block button as soon. And so that's kind of like a direct example of how, how having a diverse team can help. Uh, so my kind of uh, key, uh, key advice uh, for anyone wanting to increase diversity is to start at the opposite end of the pipeline from, from where people talk about uh, the, the workplace. Um, I wrote a blog post five years ago, if you think women in tech is just a pipeline problem, you haven't been paying attention. And this was the most popular thing I had ever written until Jeremy and I wrote the, the COVID-19 post last month. Uh, but so the kind of second most, uh, most popular thing I've written. Um, but I, I linked to a ton of, a ton of research in there. A key statistic to, to understand is that 41% of women working in tech end up leaving the field compared to 17% of men. And so this is something that uh, recruiting more girls into, into coding or tech is not going to address this problem if they keep leaving at very high rates. I just had a little peek at the YouTube um, chat and I see people are asking questions there. I just wanted to remind people that uh, uh -huh. we are not, um, that Rachel and I do not look at that. If you want to ask us questions, you should use the, uh, the forum thread. And, uh, and if you see questions that you like, then please vote them up, such as this one. How about an ethical issue bounty program, just like the bug bounty programs that some companies have? No, I think that's a neat idea, yeah, of uh, rewarding people for, for finding ethical issues. Um, and so the, the reason that uh, women are more likely to leave tech um, is, and this was found in a meta-analysis of over 200 books, uh, white papers, articles, uh, women leave the tech industry because they're treated unfairly, underpaid, less likely to be fast-tracked than their male colleagues, and unable to advance. Um, and, and too often, uh, diversity e efforts um, end up just focusing on white women, which is wrong. Um, interviews with 60 women of color who work in STEM research found that 100% had experienced discrimination and their particular stereotypes varied by race. And so I would say it's very important to, to focus on women of color in, in diversity efforts um, as, a, as a kind of the top priority. Um, a study found that men's voices are perceived as more persuasive, fact-based, and logical than women's voices, even when reading identical scripts. Researchers found that women receive more vague feedback and personality criticism and performance evaluations, whereas men are more likely to receive actionable advice tied to concrete business outcomes. When women receive mentorship, it's often advice on how they should change and gain more self-knowledge. When men receive mentorship, it's public endorsement of their authority. Um, only one of these has been uh, statistically linked to getting promoted. It's the public endorsement of authority. And all these studies are linked to in another post I wrote called The Real Reason Women Quit Tech and How to Address It. Is that a question, Jeremy? Or um, yeah, so if you're interested, kind of uh, uh, these two blog posts, I link to a ton of ton of relevant research on this, um, and I think this is kind of the the workplace is the the place to start in in addressing these things. Um, so another issue is um, tech interviews are terrible for everyone. Um, so now kind of working one step back from people that are already in your in your workplace, but thinking about the interview process. Um, and I wrote a post on how to make tech interviews a little less awful and went through a ton of research. And I will, I will say that the, the interview problem, I think, is a hard one. I think it's very time consuming and hard to, to interview people well. Um, but uh, kind of the two uh, most interesting pieces of research I came across, one was uh, from Triple Byte, which is a 
a, a recruiting company that uh, interviews uh kind of does this uh, first round technical interview for people. And then uh, they interview at Y Combinator. It, it's a Y Combinator company. And then they interview at Y Combinator companies. And so they have this very inter uh, interesting data set where they've kind of given everybody the same technical interview. And then they can see which companies people got offers from when they were you know, interviewing at many of the same companies. And the number one finding from their research is that the types of programmers that each company looks for often have little to do with what the company needs or does. Rather, they reflect company culture in the backgrounds of the founders. Um, and this is something where they even uh, they even gave the advice of if you're job hunting, uh, look for try to look for companies where the founders have a similar background to you. Um, and that's something that while I um, that makes sense, that's going to be much easier for certain people to do than others, in particular, given the, the gender and racial disparities in VC funding, that's going to make a big difference. Yes. Um, actually, I would say that was the most common advice I heard from VCs <clears throat> when I became a founder in the Bay Area was when recruiting, focus on getting people from your network and people that are as like-minded and similar as possible. That was by far the most common advice that I heard. Yeah, I mean, this is I mean, I, maybe like one of my controversial opinions. I, I do feel like ultimately like I get why people hire from their network. And I think that long term, uh, we all need to be developed, well, particularly white people need to be developing more diverse networks. And that's like a, you know, like 10 year project. That's not something you can do right when you're uh, uh, hiring, but really kind of developing um, uh, a diverse uh, network of, of friends and, and, and trusted acquaintances uh, kind of over time. Um, but yeah, thank you for that perspective too, Jeremy. Uh, and then, then kind of the other study I found really interesting uh, was one where they they gave people uh, resumes and, and in one case, uh, so one resume had more academic qualifications and then one had more practical experience and then they uh, switched the gender. One was a woman, one was a man uh, or, you know, male name, a female name. Um, and basically people were more likely to hire the male and then they would use a post hoc justification of, oh, well, I chose him because he had more academic experience or I chose him because he had more practical experience. Um, and that's something that I think it's very human to, to use post hoc justifications, uh, but it's a, it's a real risk uh, that uh, definitely shows up in hiring. Ultimately, AI or any other technology are developed or implemented by companies for financial advantage, i.e. more profit. Maybe the best way to incentivize ethical behavior is to tie financial or reputational risk to good behavior. In some ways, similar to how companies are now investing in cybersecurity because they don't want to be the next Equifax, can grassroots campaigns help in better ethical behavior with regards to their use of AI? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, and I think there are a lot of analogies with cybersecurity, and I know that uh, for a long time, I think it was hard for people to make, uh, or people had trouble making the case to their bosses of why they should be investing in cybersecurity, particularly because cybersecurity is, you know, something like when it's working well, you don't notice it, um, so that can be can be hard to build the case. Um, so I, I I think that there there is a place for grassroots campaigns. Um, and I'm, I'm going to talk more, uh, I'm going to talk about policy uh, in a bit. Um, it can be hard in, in some of these cases where there are not necessarily meaningful alternatives. Um, um, so I, I do think like monopolies can kind of, kind of make that harder. Um, that's a, yeah, a good, uh, good question. 